Phyllis Wheatley, Frederick Douglass, Charles Young, Paul Lawrence Dunbar, famous African-American figures whose names are found on street signs in Wisconsin's first black-founded settlement, a tiny town near Lake Geneva that will soon be home to a state historical marker. In our Sunday morning spotlight, Taj Mahal shares the efforts to keep the legacy of Lake Ivanhoe alive for generations to come. Ready? Back in those days, you might see three or four cars. Well, I'm hoping this story will one day be in the history books. But I grew up being on this lake <laughs> nearly all day, every day. Peter Baker could be considered the human encyclopedia of Lake Ivanhoe. I'm a resident of Lake Ivanhoe and I've been one since 1966 when my parents brought me up here. It is a small, quiet, peaceful lake. It has an inlet and an outlet. Lake Ivanhoe is located in the town of Bloomfield in Walworth County. The most recent census data counts a population of about 400 people. At just nine years old, Peter fell in love with the great outdoors that Lake Ivanhoe has to offer. He's been here ever since. And we literally swam and fished and camped down here. To truly understand Peter's passion for Lake Ivanhoe, you have to go back in time, long before his family settled here. That goes back to 1926 when it was founded. Lake Ivanhoe is a rich part of black history in Wisconsin, a piece of history many Wisconsinites have never known about. There were three African Americans. This community was the vision of three black men from Chicago in the 1920s. Jeremiah Broomfield, Frank Anglin, and Bradford Watson. And these guys were prominent Chicagoans. I mean, it was a lawyer, a politician, and a businessman. This is Katie Green. She became interested in learning more about Lake Ivanhoe a few oh, years ago. Okay, so Her family has ties to nearby Lake Geneva. She's now working with Peter to spread the word about the historical significance of Lake Ivanhoe. Reading about it, you just, it's, it's a remarkable story of these men coming up here and saying, we're going to create a place that's open to everyone. Broomfield, Anglin, and Watson were seeking a safe place away from racial tension in America's 1920s. These were the times of segregation and sundown towns where black people were not welcomed after dark in some places. And the three gentlemen that decided to do this uh, were having a hard time going anywhere and enjoying the ability to fish looking for a place where they could vacation with their families without worry, the three men decided to create their own community. They searched out the property, they bought the property, they set up the street signs and, and the streets. They had someone draw up the architecture. With the help of investors, black and white, they purchased 80 acres of farmland on Ryan Lake in Walworth County. The lake would later be named Ivanhoe, and the community was built as a resort town with streets named after famous African Americans. Lake Ivanhoe became a vacation destination many viewed as a getaway from Chicago. At that time, there was a lot of racial strife going on in Chicago. At its inception, it thrived as an entertainment destination. The Depression came in 1929 and put an end to it. The community after that, they had sold a lot of lots before then. They continued to sell lots. They left the realtor here. There was a, a little time in between where they almost lost the community. By the 1970s, Lake Ivanhoe lost its resort town status, but still remained an important community. Through the years, uh, as I became of age, I got involved with the Lake Ivanhoe Property Owners Association. I was always involved with the lake and fishing and stuff up here. And what keeps me involved is uh, it's historical. It doesn't take much to figure that there's no other place. Now Peter is working to spread the word about Lake Ivanhoe's history and to ensure this community is given the recognition it deserves. Once I did the research on it, I decided to tell the story. He's been working for years to get Lake Ivanhoe's history acknowledged on the state level. I was one of the people that sought out a historical marker. And it's finally happening. This has been such a long fight for me because I knew the importance of it. Wisconsin's Historical Society has approved Lake Ivanhoe to receive one of nearly 40 historical markers that will be placed around the state over the next three years. The Historical Society says this effort is part of a larger project to support historically marginalized communities and elevate the history of those communities. This story needs to be told. Katie says they created social media pages to help get the word out and preserve the history of Lake Ivanhoe. This is a community that's basically in my backyard that I never knew about. And now, like, my life has been so much, like, more enriched since meeting Peter and learning the story. 
and being able to share it with others. The historical marker is expected to happen before the end of the year. I am really, really excited right now. I'm just sorry that the majority of people have now passed away that were involved with the, this community and were the support and encouragement and role models for me that are now gone. I wish they could all be here to see it.